Hello everyone. In this class, we will try to understand that how to calculate the reaction when we are having variable loading. So eventually we are going to learn how to get an equivalent load from a variable loading distribution and then how to get the reaction for different types of beam. In this session particularly we are going to talk about the reaction of a simply supported beam. So here I am showing two pictures. In the first picture you can see that this is a variable loading distributing from this pin joint to a roller joint and its value increasing from 0 to a maximum value that is 20 Newton per meter and we call this 20 Newton per meter as the intensity of this variable loading. In the second picture we are having mixing of two types of loading. Initially we are having a zero load which is increasing up to a certain length and the maximum value is 8 Newton per meter. Later on we are having again a different distribution that is not actually a triangle but it is a trapezium. So we must understand that how to first get an equivalent point load from the different types of variable load and then how to calculate the reaction. So if we will see that how to get an equivalent load here I am having a triangle which is representing a variable load. The load is distributed for a length of L and the maximum loading is W Newton per meter. If you will recall the uniformly distributed loading in case of uniformly distributed load when we are interested to get an equivalent load what we do this is let's intensity of this uniformly distributed load and it is distributed at a length of L. So the net load or equivalent load is the load multiplied by the length because the total load will be considered in this point load and the position of this load is actually at the center of this distribution. The total distribution is up to length L. So the centroid of this load will be L by 2. That means we can say that loading is here. So this is the equivalent point load on the given length. Similarly in case of triangular loading first we want to get the load and here the load is nothing but the area of this triangle. And what would be the area of this triangle that will be 1 by 2 into W that is the maximum height which we can consider as the height of this triangle and the base of the triangle is L. So my loading will be W L by 2. Now the second question where the load is acting. So for that we must know that what is the centroid of a triangle. In case of a triangle the centroid lie at a distance L by 3. For the base similarly if the height of the triangle is h the centroid will be at h by 3. But in this case we are mainly interested in the position of centroid along the horizontal length. So for this triangular loading the centroid will lie somewhere here and this length will be l by 3. The remaining length will be 2l by 3. So if I will make the equivalent point load of this triangular or the variable load the load will act at a distance l by 3 from this end and the magnitude of load will be W L by 2. So this is how what we need to do for a given problem first we will make an equivalent load and then we will get the reaction from the equivalent load. So let's start with the first problem here I am having a single variable load which is changing its magnitude from a value 0 to a value 20. Let this is point A and this is point B and the length of the beam is 12 meter and this is our simply supported beam. Please understand. In case of simply supported beam one end is a pin joint other end is a roller joint. That means the total reaction on the surface will be 3 because two reaction will be here. Let this is R1 this is Rx and the second reaction will be here that is R2. But please understand in the given case the total loading is only downward loading that means there is no horizontal loading. So there is no sense of considering the horizontal reaction here. So we are having two reaction naming R1 and R2. Here first I have to calculate the equivalent load and my load will be what area of this triangle that will be 1 by 2 into 12 into 20. So the loading will be 120 Newton and the position of load will where the position of load will be centroid of this triangle. That means if the base is of length 12 the centroid will lie at a length L by 3 that means 12 by 3 from this perpendicular side. So the position of the load will be here that is 12 by 3 that is 4 and the magnitude will be this area so it is 120 Newton. Now I am having a simple point load acting on a simply supported beam and I have to find the reaction. 
and we know how to calculate the reaction to get the reaction we can first write the force balance so the total upward load is r1 plus r2 that is going to be balanced by 120 newton if i will take the moment at joint a the moment equation for joint a will be what 120 into this perpendicular length that is 12 minus 4 8 so i will write 120 into 8 the sense of this moment will be clockwise because load is acting in the downward direction. If you are having any confusion, you can watch my other video where I have exclusively considered how to find the moment and the sense of the moment. So this is my clockwise moment which is ultimately going to be balanced by this counterclockwise moment because of the R2. So I will write that R2 into the total length that is 12. So the R2 value will comes out as 80 Newton. Once I get the R2 value using the first equation, I can get the R1. So R1 will be 40 and R2 will be 80. So this is how we can first get an equivalent load from a variable distributed load and then we can get the reaction. In our second problem, we are having a problem where there, are, there is a mixing of loading. A simple variable load, then we are having a trapezium kind of loading. So how to define the different loading from this figure? Let's first make the reaction that is my R1 reaction and this is my R2 reaction. Let this is point A and this is point B. If you will carefully observe this figure, you can find that up to length 6, it is a pure variable load. So I can define that this can be understood by taking this triangle. Second, if I will see this trapezium, I can break this trapezium. One is a rectangular load. Another one is a triangular load. So this rectangular body or the rectangular load can be considered as a uniformly distributed load because this load is constant from length 6 to the length 15 because the total length of this beam is 15 meters. Therefore, we are having three types of loading. Let's consider this is my loading 1, this is my loading 2 and this is my loading 3. So write the load value that is first load will become area of this triangle that is 1 by 2 into 6 into 8 it will comes out as 24 Newton. Load 2 is the second triangle and please understand here the height of this triangle is what 12 minus 8 because up to this length we are having value 8 and beyond that we are having 12 so the height of this variable loading the triangle 2 will be 4 Newton per meter. The base length will be 9 so my load 2 will be what 1 by 2 into my base into height of the triangle that is 4 so it is coming out 18 Newton. Third is the uniformly distributed load. The uniformly distributed load extended from length 6 to 15. That means my total load will be what? The intensity of the loading that is defined by this length, which is 8. So the load from this point to this point is uniformly distributed. If I will just ignore the top triangle and the value of this load is 8 Newton per meter. So my total load will be 9 into 8. That is 72 Newton. So this is how we are having three different loads. The second is where is the position of this load. So in case of first loading, it will be at the centroid of this triangle and we know the centroid of the triangle will be L by 3 or the base, one third of the base. The base of this triangle is 6, so this length will be 6 by 3. That means 2, so the remaining length will be 4. For the uniformly distributed load, the load will act at the centroid of this body, so it means the total length is 9th, so this length will be 4.5. And for the case of the triangle, the again the load will be at the one, one third of the base. That means this length will be the one third of the base. Base is 9 for this triangle, so it will be 9 by 3. So ultimately, I am having three loads and the position of the three loads. So let's try to make our equivalent diagram where we can represent the two reaction along with the three distributed load. So my first distributed load will act here as an equivalent point load. The magnitude is 24 Newton acting at a distance 4 from this side. The second is the uniformly distributed load and the uniformly distributed load is having distance 4.5 from here. The total length is 15. And the third is this triangular load which is having magnitude 18 acting at a distance 3 from the right end. So the third load will be of magnitude 18 Newton. This is of 72 Newton and this length is 3. After making this equivalent diagram, now it is very easy to calculate the reaction. To get the reaction, we can first write the load equation where we are having two upward load R1 and R2. These two loads are going to be balanced by the 24 plus 18 plus 72 which is coming out 114 Newton. 
now i can write the moment equation for any of the position so let's write the position for a if i am writing the moment at point a it will be 24 into distance 4 then 72 into the distance will be 15 minus 4.5 and third will be 18 into what 15 minus 3 that means 12 all the three loads are having a clockwise sense so let's put all the loads on the left hand side and the other will be r2 into 15 this will having a sense counterclockwise when i will solve this equation i will get r2 is coming out 76 newton so my r2 is 76 newton and i know that the r1 will be what 114 minus 76 so this is how what we can do we can make equivalent loading and then we can map the uh, we can calculate the reaction similarly if we are having any cantilever type of beam we can also calculate the reaction that we will consider in our next class so for i hope that you have understood that how to get the equivalent load and then the reaction i'm closing this session with this note thank you